Hi folks, um, this is part 3 of my ClickView date and time series. Um, in this one I'm going to show you how to sum a value between from one day to another date. So it's fairly simple what I'm going to show you in this video, but uh, if you use the same concept for you can use the same concept for lots of different uh, kind of date functions if you want to call it that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a straight table and there's reasons why I'm creating a straight table because it helps you, um, I'm not going to choose a dimension, I'm going to uh, say next, I'm just going to create an expression. Um, so sum of value. The reason for that is, uh, if I click finish, so now I have a straight table but I only have the sum of all the values. So I'm just going to go into properties and then the caption I'm just going to say, Between dates. Let's click OK. So, drag this over. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get the sum of a value between a specific dates. And this is how we do it. This is kind of a set way that I do it. Um, so, I'm going to put a space in there. First thing you do is you create a bit of set analysis. So, you open uh, squiggly brackets. And well, obviously, we want to choose the date. So, what you do is you put in some value. The date is the analysis you want to do, and within that set analysis, you want to put in some more. So, where the date is equal to, and then you put in type in the following. And if you follow these steps um, each time. Put a space in there so you know it's where we're going to put in the, the start date, and then we're going to on the next one we we'll put in the end date. So, so that's what I always start with. If I want to sum up profit or sum up uh, sales from a date to a date, this is what I put in. The date in this instance, the date field is called date. It could be calendar date, it could be physical date, it could be a number of um, number of different things. So what we do is, if you just kind of memorize this or follow what we've done, in here we're going to put in, this is greater than, it's the greater than date, so we're going to say uh, date, open close brackets, and within date we say max, open close brackets, and within max we say date and then just outside that we say minus seven so we want the last seven days then we just delete our final space and then again so from the max date seven days go up until when well it's up until date open close parentheses max open close and then within that is your date field and for now we're just going to leave that as it is so if I click OK now if I hover over this you can see that it's telling me it's giving me a value which is good and it's actually telling me to sum where the date is greater than 26th of the 1st 2013 and less than the 2nd of the 2nd 2013 so if we go into properties and we say actually we don't want to open till the max date we want to say the max date minus one click OK click apply then if you hover over and you see it's no longer the 26th to the 1st of the second or 26th to the 2nd of the second it's now 26th to the 1st of the second which is actually um, seven days so that's the correct really the correct formula for the last seven days is from yesterday and the previous seven days. So I'll just uh, what we do is we can copy this formula, um, and we go into the, we can uh, copy and paste, and then go into this, and we can get rid of the sum, and we can say count. 
distinct. Oh, I'm missing the um my hair dog bark, I'm sorry about that. Count distinct date and instead of the value we want to count the dates. So we're saying we want to count how many days are between this and this. So we click OK, click OK again. We can see it's actually telling us that there are actually seven days between this. If you went to properties again, now bear in mind that if we put a label on this like uh, last seven days value, and click OK. When we hover over, when we hover over this, we don't get uh, any help on the menu. Whereas this doesn't have a label, and when we hover over it, it's going to help us. Saying count distinct dates between the 26th and the 4th and the 4th of the 2nd, and it's seven days. So if we went to properties again and we make some changes to the to this and say get rid of the minus one, it's actually really going to show us instead of the last seven days, it's actually going to show us the last eight days. So because we have to count, the count is helping us figure out what's going on here. So we click apply. Let's see, it's actually given us the last eight days. So we could do it a number of ways. You can go back into the expression. We could have put minus one here, which I think is better to put minus one, which will give us the seven days, but it'll give us up until yesterday. So uh, not today, but the last seven days before today. So what you could do is get rid of the minus one then, and um, put in minus six. Click apply, it will still give you the last seven days, but it's going to give you uh, the last seven days, including today. And there might be still activity that you're going to, you know, or some values that you want to include. So, for this, uh, the best way is to really say minus one and minus seven, which should give you the last seven days, but uh, not including today. And again, if we get rid of our label in the last seven days values. Click the plot. So click OK, and then we hover over this. We can see we're getting the 26th. And the same employees here. Um, we could go in. We could go in and change this to the last 30 days. Click, click apply. And then when we hover over it, the value has changed. You can see it's now saying from the third uh, of the first 2013 to the first of the second. And again, we can. We can go back in, we can change 30 to give us the last 90 days. Click, click OK, and then we hover over, you can see it's saying the, from the 4th of November 2012 to the 1st of February 2014. And again, the value was changed to take, take in all the values within that period. So, I hope that helps. Again, it all comes down to if we go back into one of these. And get rid of uh, get rid of some of this stuff. Like if we bring it back and get rid of all we put in was date max date minus one, so we delete that. And then all we brought in here was um, date max date minus ninety. This is what you always start out with. Sum your date field equals um, within your set your starting piece and your max piece. Um, and if you follow those guidelines, you, you can't go wrong really. So I hope that helps and I'll see you next video. Cheers guys.